Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the morning toast. Happy Tuesday. Hope uh, no excuse. excuse excuse excuse. Sorry. You think the Shice brothers are here for nothing? I'm so sorry because we did you know the Monday episode Sunday. I'm all verklempt. I'm all out of sorts. Happy Wednesday, everyone. Hope everyone's having an amazing hump day. Don't forget to hump someone you love. Even if it's a Strice brother. Especially if it's a Strice brother. Especially. You guys, I hope we're coming through crystal clear today. Yes, there was an audio snafu yesterday, but you know what? It's not a mistake if you learn something. 100%. We learned plenty. So let's talk about it. And now we have a checklist. We were early yesterday. We were like, we had plans. We were like, we're going to get in, in so early. We finished. We felt good. Amerigo Vespucci. Grab my computer. I get the audio off of our system in a little micro card. SD. Thank you. Memory card. And I plug it into my computer and it's like sounding a little weird because I'm not there. And I'm like, I probably wouldn't have even noticed if it was you, but thank God it was me (laughs) because I noticed. Trills. And I'm like, wait, my mic. like, oh, Jackie being low again. (laughs) She's so shy. She's so quiet. Who cares? But then I was like, me? So I look down at our system and I see... I'm mic number two. You're mic number one. I see mic number two wasn't on. So I audibly gasp (gasps) and I look at it and Jackie, you say what? And you look at what I'm looking at and then you go. (gasps) And that's really the end of the story. So here's the question. Were you silent or were you silenced? I definitely wasn't silent. No, never. You? The the thing is, for me, you don't even have to ask that question because I'm never silent. If I'm silent, it's because I've been silenced. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So we did what we could to salvage the um, audio from yesterday. It was fine. Of course, you know, everyone was upset. But again, I'm so flattered by like the influx of Right. You kind of like love when we have issues because it just shows you like how how many people need you and how many people are listening. Because when things are good, they're good. hear from less people. People are enjoying. No news is good news. But if you want news put out bad news. 100%. And boy, did we get bad news yesterday. And of course, like, you know. I hate when that happens, like for a million reasons. Trust us, no one is more frustrated than us. And if we could record an entire other episode, again, we would, but like it would be fraudulent. Like we'd be making the same joke, Amerigo Vespucci, Josh Groban. No, and like, like um, how did we even work Amerigo into the conversation? I don't know. He wouldn't have made it into take two. Yeah, so like this is just, we've done it before where we've recorded like 20 minutes and we realized someone's microphone wasn't on, so we start over. But you really just can't re-record the you, same whole episode. Like, it's just... If we didn't have a backup audio and the first audio was unusable, then we would have had to re-record. Yeah. But I think putting out, like, the take two watered down version would have been worse than the take one murky audio. No, it's just, like, inauthentic. And we're extremely authentic. It's like It's crazy. You smell that? It's our authenticity. Mm. So... It is what it is. We have a checklist now. You, like Jackie said, it's not a mistake if you learn something. And what we learned is like we need a, a routine, a checklist of everything we need to make sure we do when we're recording together and when we're recording separately so that video is taken care of, so that audio is taken care of. And now we have two checklists. They're pinned up on the wall. They're quite beautiful. Um, and we ran through it today. And so let's hope, let's pray. Let's say, you know what? All together. Everyone close your eyes. Let's just all collectively pray and hope and dream and wish the audio on today's episode is premium and crisp, that the video is so sharp you could see this pimple on my forehead, that the smell of vision is so good you could smell my breath. Amen. You can smell Theo's infected food. Yeah, it doesn't smell, does it? No, but it looks like it does. Yeah, no, for sure. But they said like his infection just kind of tinted the fur around his um, foot and like it'll just grow out. It's not going to go away. It's just like the fur is, it's Pink. useless. We got to get rid of it. Yeah, it's very pliny. <laughs> it's very pliny. Understood. Well... We're so glad to be here today. And if you're looking for some more crystal clear audio, we dropped a Patreon episode yesterday doing what is always everyone's favorite thing that we do on Patreon. We do it every few months. Uh, We did general Q&A where you can ask us any question in the Facebook group and we'll answer most of them. We actually had some really good combos yesterday. Yes, and we got really good, like unique, interesting questions. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it except for the part where you probably like said unintentionally, like the meanest thing you ever could have said to me and like really... um, Kind of dug in on my insecurities. I didn't know I was doing any no, of those of things. I thought I was giving you a compliment, as you know, some of the worst insults always are. A hundred percent. Because I would rather someone say something mean, like knowing that they were trying to be mean. It's like, oh, you were just trying to hurt my feelings. Right, of course. As opposed to like, that's your truth. Right. And it's my 
burden. And so if you want to know what we're talking about, unfortunately, we can't tell you. You just have to hear it for yourself at patreon.com slash morning toast. Yeah. Um, so it's been a really fucking treacherous day for me because we had such a great evening, you and I and Zach, all the boys on the couch. Well, Harry was asleep. We stayed up till late, like 1130. Late for me, yeah. And we watched Tim Dillon's new comedy special. We were cackling. It's always very scary to watch someone who you like on the internet in real life on like stand up because you never know how it's going to translate. It was wild. Honestly, it's, I've said this before on the podcast, but like the way that I like spend nights thinking about like maybe something that could be misconstrued on the podcast versus what Tim Dillon was saying in his comedy special on a, on, on a real streaming service on Netflix. I'm like, what am I worried about? He used three slurs. I was like shook. Yeah. So also, it's not to make everything, not to make Tim Dillon special about me, but I was very relieved. <laughs> uh, it was so good. It was he really funny. so funny. I'd never seen this comedy before me because neither. when he played in New York, I was pretty pregnant, so I couldn't go. And I was so bummed. And then when I saw he was recording a special, I was like, wherever it is, I'm going to watch it. If it's on his Patreon, right. you know, I'll get the Rothschild. We support child, Patreon I'll get the here. Rothschild membership, uh-huh. like whatever it is. But it was on Netflix and it's called a real Tim Dillon, A Real Hero. And there were like some, we were bold the over- coma- Miner. The coal, the coal miner moment, I haven't laughed that hard in a very long time. And the Little Caesars moment for me was really special. It was really good. I mean, if you're not into like even remotely offensive comedy, you're not going to like it. But it was fucking funny. Like really funny. Really fucking funny. And it was the perfect length, I think. And I think for you Same. too. 48 minutes, I, th- I thought it was the perfect length. And I was just feeling good about the night. You know, you and I made popcorn. We did. We put them in little containers that said popcorn. We were so cute and like, you know, kind of like, Giving blogger like, but that's what happens when you move to the suburbs. Like right. you become you have all this space for crap. You become like a a mommy blogger suburban mom, and Who that's buys really, like chachis. That's what's happened to me. Except I've had those popcorn things since yeah. like three apartments ago, but now I can finally use them because I can see where they are. Hundred percent, and it was just a gorgeous evening. Yeah, go to bed eleven thirty, TikTok till twelve, fall asleep, wake up. Oh, I gotta pee. I wonder what time it is. Oh, I look over. It's two o'clock. Go pee, get back in bed, and I'm awake, like, for the day. Like, there's no way. I'm flipping and flipping. At 3.30, I did eventually get on my phone, and, like, every 30 minutes, I would, like, watch, go to bed, try and sleep, watch, go and sleep. By about 5 o'clock, I had given in to the fact that I was awake for the day, and honestly, I just couldn't get over it. Like, it's so stupid. But then my fate changed because I was on TikTok, And I saw this clip from an interview and I like didn't even know what the interview was about or who this this person was, but the girl looked vaguely familiar. Did I have told you this this morning yet? No, I watched your story, but I had no idea who you're talking about. Okay. I'm about to blow your mind. Can't wait. So her name was Jordan Turpin and they were just telling this story, like this crazy story. And I'm like, you know what? Let me go find this full Diane Sawyer because they were like on TikTok, watch five minutes, part one. And then I had to go watch a million other videos. I'm like, let me just find the whole thing on YouTube. It was this hour-long Diane Sawyer interview sitting down with Jordan and Jennifer Turpin. And if you're like into like, if you follow, like it's not true crime, but like if you just follow like crazy shit that happens, it's like a famous story. And it's somewhat recent. I had never heard of it. But this girl, Jackie, she looked so familiar. So the story is crazy. Jordan is the younger sister of the two. They're They're sisters. They're they're not married. Okay. Oh, no, they're not married. They're sisters. They're one of 12, uh, 13 siblings. And they lived in a house, like, condemned, like, feces, hoarders, disgust, in, like, two or three bedrooms filled with bunk beds with all the kids, ranging from, like, 10 to 30. All these kids who have literally never left their house. And when they do, it's, like, four times in their lifetime where their parents, like, literally force them to act normal. They were living in filth. They never bathed. They were never went to school. They... They had such limited vocabulary. Their parents chained them up, beat them, abused them. Like the worst fucking thing you can think of. And after a while, Jordan gets access to a cell phone. And eventually she's the one who climbs out of a window in the middle of the night because they, the parents tell them we're moving to Oklahoma tomorrow. Jordan's like, I'm ne- we're never, none of us are going to survive. They're so malnourished. They're not going to survive a trip to Oklahoma. Jordan's like, tonight's the night. She jumps out of a window with the cell phone, runs down the block and calls a cop. And of course they have all the um, 911 operator uh, recordings. And you hear her and it sounds like a teenage runaway. She's like, I ran away from home. She doesn't know, like she never, like she watched a little TV and I'm gonna get into that in a minute because that's the part I think you'll find interesting. She couldn't even, she had such limited vocabulary. 
So she has to wait 14 minutes for the cops. They're living in California. They did live in Texas for a little while. The parents left them for three years in a trailer and would literally drop off food for them, like not even enough groceries. They were would ration it. And they would make the older siblings put the younger siblings in cages. And the older sibling, Jennifer, was like, that was the worst part. Because if I didn't do it, like they would kill me. Like they were like, they would literally kill Where me. Where were the parents going when they would Come on, Devin, doing whatever they want, party, going to Vegas. Yeah, and I feel sick. No, totally. But they were also like really religious, like Episcopalian. It was so confusing. Okay, just wait. Jordan runs out. She gets to the corner. She's on with the lady. The lady's like 14 minutes. I'm like, oh my God, 14 minutes. Like, okay. The cop pulls up and we have the body cam footage. And they actually have the cop on the Diane Sawyer thing. And then it gets reunited with the girl. It was really cute. But he's like, you know, I took this call because it was the end of my shift. And teenage runaways are always like, you just got to bring the kid back to the parents. And a great, it's a great way to end your shift. It's not like a high stress situation. And he's like, that's what I'm thinking this whole time. And she sounded kind of weird. They have like accents. They've literally never been a part of civilization. And she doesn't know like so many of the words. He was like, are you on medication? She's like, what's that? He's like, pills. She's like, no, sometimes we get Robitussin like if we have a cough. And then- and then he was like, um, are you injured? She's like, what's that? He's like, are you hurt? She's like, not right now, no. Um, and thank God, he like he was suspicious because yeah. it was weird. Thank God, this random iPhone she managed to get, she snapped a couple pics before she left, like in case anyone need, needed proof. Because one of the other sisters one time saw an episode of Cops and they needed proof. That's how they knew what proof was. Like that's how they were learning oh things. My God. So crazy. She had a picture Two of her younger sisters, and that's why they really needed to get out. Two of the younger sisters had been in chains for weeks, only let out to go to the bathroom. Even sometimes not even let out to go to the bathroom. Thank God she did this, took this picture. This cop saw the picture of these two malnourished kids locked up in chains in this disgusting, filthy, filthy fucking house. And then he was like, oh my God. So the whole ordeal from the time that she leaves to the time that the cops get there, it's about two hours. She stays with the police officer, but she keeps saying, she's like, if my parents figure out that I left, like we're fucked. Two hours later, they go in for a wellness check, even though nobody called in on a wellness check. Like they have enough proof. These two fucking forlorn, disgusting, satanic fucks walk out of the house and are like, what's going on? And they're like, we got a wellness check. Uh, you have kids in here? And they're like, yeah, you gotta let us in. So okay. So they go in and it's disgusting. But she says to them, you know, we're moving tomorrow, so just don't mind the filth. And I guess like being disgusting isn't a crime. It is an unsafe environment for children, but so far they haven't seen the chains. The chains is what they're looking for. But I guess when the parents were being weird outside, they were telling the other kids, get rid of the chains, get rid of the chains, get rid of the chains. So they go into the two bedrooms and there's really skinny kids in disgusting conditions, but again, not like that thing they needed. They needed the chains. So they're talking to the dad, they're talking to the dad, this cop realizes he's standing in front of a bunch of moving boxes. The moving boxes are covering another door. In the door is another room for the other kids. And there's one kid locked up in chains. And then once it's all out there, another one of the kids is like, yeah, all the chains are in the closet. They just made us throw, throw them in there. And that was like the thing they needed. They were, they pled guilty within four days, whatever. The story gets even crazier, okay? And I'm sorry if you guys know this story and you're familiar with it, but I, I got a lot of messages. any of this. Okay. So wait, it gets crazier when, when she starts explaining like the context of how she knew things, like what gave her, Jordan is the one who ran and Jennifer was like her accomplice and Jennifer was the older one. Like Jennifer went to school for three years, uh, no, sorry, until the third grade because she's an older kid. But then they stopped sending their kids to school and had a bunch of other kids. So she had like a small context of how life was not supposed to be like this, but some of the kids were born into it, but she knew, she knew it was bad. So Jennifer got this phone. And she loves to sing. And she was like making videos of her singing in the bathroom at night. And she would post them on like this like social media account that she made. And someone was messaging her and was like, why are you only ever singing in the bathroom and at night? Well, she's like, oh, that's how my life is, blah, blah, blah. And this guy, random guy on the internet was like, that's not normal. She didn't know that because she'd been like that her whole life. She's like, wait, what? So then what really changed it all is when she found Justin Bieber. And honestly, when she was talking about Justin Bieber, I could cry. And of course I Googled, of course she's like since met Justin, Justin brought her to a concert. Cause apparently the story galvanized the nation. I never heard of it. So she's- When well, was this? So she got out in 2018 and the interview, they all, mostly all of the kids are anonymous, except for the two sisters who finally showed their faces in 2022. This interview was like very new. Or maybe it's 2016, 2020. It was four years later. So- She's like, I used to watch these Justin Bieber music videos and I couldn't believe like they're at the, it's just, you know, those young music videos. It's like they're at a bowling alley and they're having so much fun. She's like, is that like a 
possibility. Like, I want that life. Like, look like they're having so much fun. And so it was like these little seeds of things that she used to see, High School Musical, that would, like when her parents were out, they had a TV, but of course the kids weren't allowed to watch it. But the parents would leave for like long amounts of time and they were able to like get some context. It's like, what the fuck is going on in the world? And they never left because they were like, our parents like will actually like murder us. Like, and Jordan knew, she's like, I, if I get caught, like I'm dead. But at least I know I tried. It was so fucking sad. And so all of the things that, led her to the place where she was able to like come to the realization and then find the courage to leave was from like pop culture in a way, because that was really the only things they had access to, but like also really fucked up, like manipulative shit. Like they were bankrupt, of course, because nobody was working. They were just beating their kids. And literally they used to go drive themselves into debt, going to Target or Walmart and getting tons of brand new kids toys for the mom. They were never open. No one was allowed to use them. So the police walk in, they're like, oh, all these kids toys. It looks like Santa's, you know, workshop. No, they were never allowed to touch them. So fucking weird. Wait, it gets so much worse, okay? So the kids range when they when they get saved from about 10 to 30. That means the kids who are under 18 have to re-enter the foster care system. And Why can't their older siblings adopt them? Because their older siblings are under a guardianship from the uh, government because they they're not really like fully formed adults are they're stunted they would say there was 12 year olds in there who had the arms of four month olds infants like that's how crazy malnourished they were so wait it gets even more fucked up so the kids who went to foster care it they abc news was killing it like literally investigative calling everyone because the town is covering it up council member they're chasing council members through the lobby i'm like yeah get them everyone's covering it up the kids who are in the foster care system there are two kids at least that we know of who were in homes who were then raided for abuse so they went from one hell to another hell. Can you believe that? Then the older kids, you know, it was a story that galvanized the nation. They raised just regular people, go fund me, things like that, 600 grand for them. It was put in a trust by the government. This guy, one of the, the, older, the oldest one, 30, he's like, I just wanted a bike. Like I have a job, like I wanna get around. No, I couldn't get a bike. Like they have no access to their own money. They're living in squalor. The person who's like the trustee of the account, of course, ABC News got their name, Vanessa, hunting them down. Oh, she no longer works for the government. Like, so fucking shady. Nothing has changed. The kids are living like, like nothing. Well, obviously, uh, the kids in foster care are just going to a different sort of hell. And the ones who are older have no help. This like task force was put together to help them and the money and like guide them through life. Be like, they were supposed to help them like use public transit. He would call Vanessa. How do I figure it out? Crazy, like it got so fucked up afterwards, even more. But the thing that really struck me was Jennifer, the older one, who was in it the longest and like it was just, and she knew that it wasn't supposed to be that way because she lived, a, even when she was in school, she was never getting showered. Like mm. they were not taking care of her, but she got to go to school. She said, Diane Sawyer was like, what do you guys want to do now? And here's what was crazy. Jordan, the one who jumped out the window, was like, I love making TikToks. I'm like, <laughs> that's how I know her because for a while this blonde girl kept coming up on my TikToks and I was like reading the comments because she was so frail and everyone in the comments is like you look so good I'm so happy for you and I'm like wait what because she was literally like they, they said she had the legs of like a six-year-old so I was like I remember being so confused and not looking into it further and then they put up some of her TikToks I'm like oh my god I've seen her dancing then I had to go follow her this morning and then the older girl, and it's really interesting how the whole time, well, the two girls, I don't know about all the other kids, the two girls were like so um, like strong in their faith. Like they kept talking about God, even though their parents were like crazy fucks who like had so many kids for God and like were doing all this for God. Like they still remained really steadfast in their faith, which I thought was really interesting. And then the older girl, Diane was like, what do you want to do? She's like, I want to be a Christian pop star. And Diane was like, who do you love? Like she was like, I love Kelly Clarkson. Wait, and she was like, what's your favorite Kelly? I'm like, literally gonna cry. She was like, what's your favorite Kelly Clarkson song? And she was like, Broken and Beautiful, that new one. She was like, that's me from Troll. She was like, that's me, I'm broken, but it's beautiful. It was, uh, I feel like I was meant to wake up so early so I could watch. I'm, I, I can't believe I didn't know about this. So I'm sorry if you knew that already. I spent literally 16 minutes. Jackie, it was the craziest. I need to watch more documentaries. Like I need to know more. And like going to the sentencing, the two older kids spoke. And then some of the kids wrote letters that the older kids spoke and like some of them were like forgiving. I'm like, okay, you could never be me. Forgiving, like we see you. Some other kids were like, fuck you. Like this is my life now. And the two parents 
got 25 to life. Right. They're in separate prisons. Um, the dad was like, oh, oh, I have a statement, but my lawyer has to read it. Like, oh, shut up. Okay, that's not about you. And then the mom read a statement. And she's like, I'm sorry that I hurt my kids. Like, I just... I'm not buying it, you know? Sorry, he's not going to cut it. Sorry, and that's really what they said. They were like, you know, we watched her her crying on with the speech, and, you know, we believed her. She's our mom. And they were like, we don't even like to call her mom, but we will for the sake of this interview. But they used to make us call them mother and father. But, like, I call her Tracy or whatever the fuck her name was. Um, they were like, we watched this apology, and we, like, believed her. But then it's like we remembered she's so fucking manipulative. Like, you have to remember that. They are like, we have no interest in, like ever communicating with her for now. Like maybe that'll change, but like for now it's going to be a no. It was the craziest journey I went on this morning. Um, that makes me so sick. Jackie was fucking sick. Especially sick. the part where like it's still not Going good on. for them. And the kids in the foster care, the foster care system. It's, and that's what the person on the, doc, the expert was saying. Like this is a system that was literally created for the sole purpose of helping people. Helping kids. Helping kids. And it's literally- The most twisted. It's the most like fucked up. And so I loved that ABC was like dragging everyone, like the companies, the people, they're calling out employees by name. I'm like, yeah, Vanessa. They were just, honestly, they were doing great reporting. Diane Sawyer, she kills it. But it's crazy how like one, everyone in general, in theory, like we're here, we're, we need to help the children. Right. These kids are in trouble. There's a task force dedicated to helping these kids. The whole world is paying attention. And, and it's still, still, they're not helping the kids. No, it's so disgusting. The government is literal trash. And also like the girl who went to school until third grade, like showing up not showered, like the teachers are supposed to. So, okay, so that's what they said. They said now they all went back to like her, her school records. Was there any reporting of, with, apparently if it, the two telltale signs of abuse are like if a kid shows up really thin and like malnourished looking and um, unwashed, like unbathed, mm -hmm. dirty clothes, those are the two telltale signs. And- According to a classmate of her, like apparently this guy, when this whole story came out, he's a doctor now. His Facebook post went went viral because he was like, I remember Jennifer because she was the kid nobody wanted to talk to. They were in the second grade. Right. So like the kids obviously It's not for the kids to, to right, recognize kids obviously don't know better. Abuse. But he was like, we remember like the smelly kid. And he's like, the guilt I feel for not like acknowledging or reporting, even though it's not on the kids, it's no. on the adults. And it's a failure on everyone at that school. And oh, by the way, there were so many things. So they were homeschooled because it's not legal to just pull your kids out of school. There's a record. They set up, oh, the uh, principal is the dad, whatever. They set up this fraudulent homeschooling. They never homeschool the kids. And you're supposed to have monthly, weekly, when you're, I don't know the whole thing, but like when you're a part of the American homeschooling system, there are weekly check-ins that you have to provide. You have to provide curriculum. No one was ever checking in. There was like a million ways when, like there was a million ways that they could have been like a, a tipped off to what was going on. Never. It took the kid, the girl risking her life, jumping out of the window to save her and her siblings. And it was just the way they were talking about the siblings. Oh, it was just terrible. It was so, so sad. That's so sad. You know what? It also makes me sad to think about, not to make it worse, but like I think a lot of situations, teachers do recognize signs of abuse and that's how a lot of kids are, are helped and saved. Um, but also it makes it worse. And think about how many kids during COVID and didn't go I know. to school. And I know, I was thinking about who, that like, too. Kids who didn't have food at home. One, a lot of kids like they're, when they go to school, like they're getting a lunch, they're getting yeah. a, like a meal uh -huh. and that's so important for them. They're also getting like all these things if they come from a bad home life. Yeah. And there's so many degrees of a bad home life. And there's obviously that extreme, but there's also, you know, lesser forms. And like all those kids stayed home for over a year. I know. And all those signs of abuse were, did, were, went unseen. But you know what else? It's like Gabriel Fernandez, his teacher saw mm -hmm. bruises and sent CPS and it made his home situation worse. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there's really no like saving kids in that situation because only, you know, maybe one out of 10 times does it actually no, work. And, and they, then they, wait, they, no, the, so, so they, they get out of the abusive home and into a foster care home that's decent it, uh, at best. At best. Right. Yeah. And I'm sure there's some lovely foster of course, care this families. This is not a general That's an statement. exception. Yeah. It's the exception. Yeah. No, even if you're able to get the teacher see it, CPS does their job, they take the kid. Where do they put them? Right, because with the Gabriel Fernandez situation, it was a huge failure on CPS. Mm -hmm. It's so much so. I think like Gabriel Fernandez even had a file at that. I think the FBI even looked into it because it was so obvious. Like they had one of the nurses in the documentary being like, I never saw anything like that in my life. It was just, I'm sorry to like be so dark, but it was just really eye-opening and really horrible. 
But like now, like I love following her on TikTok. She Did they get like, their money yet? Because of Diane Sawyer? I don't know. But like, we're going to need to follow up. We're going to need another GoFundMe. Yeah, totally. Link. Directly. Or let's all just like follow them on TikTok. Like yeah. that's a way of supporting people. Like brand deals, things like that. Like Jennifer also has a TikTok. The other ones, um, the oldest one who didn't want to show his face, but sent like a little video of himself from the back. His name is Jordan. We don't know any of the other kids' names because they've been protected, obviously. They've chosen not to participate, which is totally understandable so I think in our own ways like we can help I followed her like everyone should follow her yeah so that's what I did I'll this get on morning TikTok to follow her that's Done. a good worthy cause that's what I did this morning um I feel like it's I've been up what time is it almost 10 hours I don't know like where this road takes me I've never slept two hours before I think it takes you to a nap a nap and then we have our meet and greet today. right so like I have to be on maybe I like nap in the car on the way to the meet and greet I think that's like why don't night. you nap after this I don't know I just like I'm here I want to spend time with Kayla I want to spend time with you like I want to go outside in the yeah. pool like you don't want to waste hours day of daylight I know that's why you're supposed to sleep at night when nothing's happening yeah no I tried that it just it wasn't working for me I'm sorry so that's what I did how was your uh morning obviously different than mine Obviously different than yours, but it's been actually a nice morning because we're moving like a little slowly and that is very helpful for me. Mm -hmm. So it was going really well until you shared that story. I know, and now, I'm so sorry. Um, I don't know how to pivot. Well, I really don't. No, I know. I'm like kind of like wishing. I and and, it and a lot of times you share a, a sad story, but it's been a few years and here's where they are now. No, I know. And you didn't give us that. No. But the, the, that you is us worse and worse. The two girls who we know seem to be doing really great. Like they both are so beautiful. I think that the way that they were raised in terms of like health will impact their health forever. Like I don't think they can really like realistically change that the way that they look. Like they're both super, super thin. Um, but the thing is, is like we don't know about the other kids. So like that's where the darkness lies. Yeah. So I'm so sorry to have done that to everyone. Um, but it's something that needs to be spoken about. Like, fuck that city councilwoman. And the one that say, spoke to them. retelling of it was very good. If you ever wanted to do like a podcast about, true you crime. know, crazy true stories, I think you had a future. I feel like this is a general statement on the true crime genre. And this is not saying that those people are bad or that people listen are bad. They're just a feel something like inherently weird about talking about like a very gruesome murder or a tragedy in a small town brought to you by blank. Like fresh. it's the monetization and like the the cult following vibe of true crime podcast does like give me a little bit of the heebie jeebies. I hear that and I don't disagree with you. I can't really speak to it because I've never listened to an episode. By the way, it's and important so, to and share so that maybe I haven't either. In every single episode, they're, you know, they come at it from Heartfelt. like an emotional point of view. They're affecting change. Mm -hmm. They're solving crimes. It's maybe, possible. Maybe some of these true crimes are donating a part of the proceeds from every episode to the person impacted in each episode. I don't know what they're doing over there. I'm not going to judge them. Okay, maybe that's, there's some that. That's totally fair. Um, if they are doing that, then I take back everything that I said. Yeah. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah. Like, if, because if they're not doing any of that, it's just weird, like, yeah, creating a brand off of like other people's misery. No, yeah. So that's just my. But thought I don't. I can't speak to it. No, me neither. I've never listened to a true. But crime let me podcast. know if they're you know paying it forward with, with this thing. See, it's like only murders in the building. Like in that first season, did their podcast benefit the victim? No, that guy they the like building? slandered that <laughs> deli owner, <laughs> and like the victim's like you know personal life yeah no seriously like if I you know I'm tragically ever you know disappeared or murdered like please don't make a podcast about me like I feel like you would like that no because I wouldn't be like around to get the followers so like what you should get the followers no <laughs> no. <laughs> no not only that but like you know really personal things come out in an investigation like obviously they have to go through your phone like what were you doing the time like what if at the time I was like pooping like you know what I mean like your please. face tuning <laughs> yeah. literally please like don't make a podcast about if anything happens to me, like I'm not interested. Could I do the podcast? Okay. You know, I would, I would aside from calling you an influencer mentor, yeah. I wouldn't say anything slanderous. No, and I think like you would, I trust your judgment. Like if there's something in the file that like is really embarrassing to my legacy, you would obviously <laughs> not but I, yeah. speak it. Yeah. You would just be like, among other things. i say it's classified. Classified. That would be the name of the podcast. Clodified. Clods declassified. <laughs> Done. <laughs> TNN, here we come. 
Um, so we have a great show, Five Stories, Dear Toasters, which are really unique. I can't wait. So I'm ready to dive in because I'm feeling like we need a change of pace. Yes, we do. So without further ado, do, 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 do. feels so good to say that when you know the, where are you, the Strice Brothers are right here. It's true. The person's on my, your lap, thrice is on my toe. I've got the, my eyes on both of them. So without further ado, do, 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 it is time for the Fast Five Stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. Ow. And today's episode is brought to you by Honey. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. It supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. So we've been using Honey, like, if you're not, like, what are you doing? Uh, The toasters hooked us to it literally years ago, and now that they're a sponsor, it's just premium because I get amazing savings and discounts from Honey on makeup, electronics, food, clothing, literally anything, you name it, it's so easy. It's free to download when you use our link. Then you're shopping. Check out, oh, look, press this little gold coin. Maybe he'll save you money. He'll scour the internet. He'll find a promo code that works for you. Boom, you're done. And now, by the way, Honey has a Safari extension, which is crazy. For your phone. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There is Safari on on the computer too. Um, If you don't already have Honey, you could straight up be missing out. It is free and it installs in seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the podcast. We would never recommend something we don't use. So you can get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash toast. That's joinhoney.com slash toast. And today's episode is brought to you by a personal favorite sponsor of Miss Jacqueline, Babbel. For all your summer travels, whether you're going abroad or staying domestic, and you want to immerse yourself in the culture, now is the perfect time to start Babbel. Babbel is a language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, and thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, there's still time to learn a new language before you reach your destination. I feel like this is one of the uh, sponsors that everyone's always like, wait, you only you only take it when you need it. So everyone's like, what's the Babbel? And so many people are traveling this summer, so listen up if you want the code and you're ready to start learning a new language just because you feel like expanding your horizons, which is always a good thing to do. Or you're taking a fabulous summer trip and you want to, you know, sing to me, Paolo. Hmm. You only need 10 minutes with Babbel to complete a lesson and then you can start having real-life conversations in as little as three weeks. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective. They have 14 different languages to choose from, including Spanish, French, Italiano, And their speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. So you can be like such a local. They won't even know you're just like a big American tourist. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. And right now, save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash TMT. That's Babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash T-M-T for up to 60% off your subscription. Babbel, language for life. Great. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Our first story... Brooklyn Beckham is being roasted on social media for claiming his career as a, quote, social media chef paid her for his $1.2 million car. Have you seen this? No, but like I did see one video where he cooked. So I guess that makes you a chef now. So a viral TikToker recently caught up with Brooklyn Beckham um, while he was out cruising around Beverly, Beverly Hills. <gasps> Daniel Mack? Red McLaren P1. Yes. Okay. The way I fucking love Daniel Mack. Let me tell you who Daniel Mack is. He's a TikToker who... He started off like so cute and he's still cute, but like his initial content was so um, like innocent. He would just walk around like really nice parts of different neighborhoods and see really nice cars and just go up to people and be like, hi, I love your car. What do you do for a living? Yeah. People always had really interesting answers. It was never like Wall Street. Like it was always just something, I have a patent. It was always like unique unique things. Then people started reaching out to him so he would get like celebrities on and like go up to people and it would be like an OnlyFans model that everyone loves. Um, and he really like built his brand and then he bought himself a car and it was like so cute. And I love his videos. Okay, so he, thank you for explaining that. That's what he does. He went up to Brooklyn Beckham in his McLaren and said- By the way, when it's a celebrity, like it's usually staged. I don't think this was. Really? Because he said, hey man, what do you do for a living? Your car's awesome. That's what he does when it's staged too. Like with a celebrity he's like been um, co- in contact with to like get in, in a video. I think like Diplo did one. A million of celebrities have done it. Okay, well Brooklyn Beckham responded, um, I'm a chef. And then Daniel Mack was like, you're a chef, really? Are you like the best chef in the world? And he said, trying to be. Eek. In Brooklyn Beckham's defense, what does he do for a living, you know? (laughs) No, but then people were commenting. What do you do for a living? Uh, I was born. That's literally what people are commenting, roasting him like, okay, maybe you like to cook, but that's not how you paid for your McLaren. No, for sure. But like, if he was put on the spot, which I I just, I refuse to believe that this wasn't like a pre-organized event, but if he was put on the spot, like, it's a hard question for Brooklyn Beckham. He doesn't really have a job. Right. I would have thought he would say model. 
Yeah, I would have said that too. I would have said model. If I was him, obviously he wants to be taken seriously as a chef, but like, it, I really hope this wasn't staged because that makes him look even worse. If it wasn't staged, it's just like an awkward situation to be in considering like, yeah, I didn't pay I for I can the car. forgive it if it's not staged. Yeah. It, but if he chose this for himself and really is that is the tiktok in there the like the link to daniel mac because if it's like so usually he'll go up to like five different people in a video and like get their reaction sometimes people don't want to be on it sometimes they do but if it's just like one video dedicated to the person then it's really like it's a setup thing you know okay do you want me to look it up yep we're going to get to the bottom him. of this. And like sometimes he'll like take it one step further and do yachts. It's really interesting. That's a really cool thing. It's a cool concept. I wonder that all the time. Yeah. Like what do people do for a living who have like these big houses uh-huh. and shit? Sometimes they'll get invited to people's houses. Okay. A Brooklyn Beckham here. So McLaren, it's a $1.2 million car. That's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. Oh, he knows Daniel Mack. He tagged Brooklyn Beckham. Are you the best chef in the world? Let's see if there's anyone else in the video because if there isn't, my name's Brooklyn. Yeah, we know. Any advice for people trying to get into cooking? Yeah, just follow your passion, whatever makes you happy. It's easy to say when you have like a billion dollars. Sounds in the bank. like someone who doesn't have a job. He's the only one in the video. It's like a dedicated post. I do believe it is. Um, it it looks like it's just like a coordinated partnership. Like maybe he, he tagged him. He wants like maybe TikTok followers. He probably does want to. Okay, wait, sorry. The plot thickens. So Brooklyn Beckham is like new to TikTok. He has one video and 48,000 followers. His first, this video was posted in 2021. So maybe he's like getting back into it. And the video he posted in 2021 was of him cooking. <laughs> um, but it does feel, oh, his following list is hidden. He follows four people. I wonder if he follows Daniel Mack. He's not letting me investigate because I guess on TikTok, you can hide who you follow. Wow. Fuck. I'm starting to feel like this was stage and she just really. Jackie, here's Helen Mirren. Okay. Like big celebrities do it. It's kind of like a press thing now. That's cool. This video has 50 million views. That's really cool. I'm sure. I can't believe, like her car was 260K. I can't believe he's riding around in a million. LeBron James is is 770,000. Like why the fuck is Brooklyn Beckham, no offense, someone who's never worked a day in his life, jealous, um, riding around in a car that's worth over a million dollars. And then honestly, like, I just feel like if this was strategic, like someone on his team, like really should have advised him against this or at least helped with the job description. Yeah. Like it would have been funny if he, if he like poked fun at himself. Yeah. But. And I feel like maybe that's not his car. Could be his parents. Dad's, could yeah. be his wife's. And mm. he just like, oh, totally. He just went to the coolest car in his arsenal to yeah. do Daniel Mac. Not in his arsenal. The coolest car that he had access to. Right, right, right. To, to do Daniel Mac. Yeah. And then didn't realize that like, he sounds kind of stupid. Like an out of touch. Well, I enjoyed talking about it. So to that, for that, I'm grateful to Brooklyn and Nicola and all the people who made this possible. And Daniel. I, Brooklyn and Nicola are like the top of the news every single day. There's something every single day because he, um, she was supporting him or he was supporting her. One of them has a project coming out. Who knows? Plus like the Victoria drama. Right. Like she's she, been speaking on the Victoria she drama. She dyed her hair brown. Did you see this? I did. I follow her on Instagram Me and I have too. to say it's... It was great during the wedding and she's just like copying like other famous people's in- like No, I saw aesthetic. her do a Q&A the other day and like it, it was like, you know, it's meant to be like an intimate Q&A as Q&As on Instagram really are. Should be, you yeah. can learn a lot about someone and everything was just like such nonsense. Like every answer, <laughs> every answer was like, every question's sort of like what inspires you sort oh. of thing. And I like, you know, it's just like, Follow your dreams. Like and it was fucking nonsense. Not a drop of tea. And imagine the questions she actually got. Like- how much does your house cost? Like, she probably got interesting How are things ones. with Victoria? Right, right. Is Brooklyn good in bed? Like, I'm sure she got no. extremely... If I was there on time, I would have posted it like Instead, a... Instead, she, like, probably, like, chose ones along the lines of, like, you know, about her acting career sort of crap. Like, it yeah. was... And it's important to remember that, like, when, like, a big-time celebrity or influencer, more so celebrity than influencer, but when they do Q&As, they're, like, extremely... They're doing it for a reason. Like... I know a lot of people who submit their own questions and I can't lie. I did that once because I just wanted to clear something up. But Mm -hmm. like they do it to either like to portray an image or to address one particular thing. So like it's clear that her Q&A was not really like get to know me and like what my life is like. It's like, yes, I'm an actress. Take me seriously. I'm an artist. Yeah. No, it was a bunch of nonsense. Hooey. 
And I wanted to see if she like saved it to her highlights so I could give you an example of the nonsensicalness. It was Brooklyn, it was Nicholas mindless Q&A. No, and you know what? Like it kind of makes sense like why they're compatible because like they're both like extremely privileged and like kind of out of touch. They're living in the clouds. They're living in the clouds, like on another planet that I would love to inhabit one day. It must be so nice To just not know anything. No. To not know what it's like to record a podcast and realize that your sister's microphone is off. (laughs) And she posted like a long thing on her Instagram the other day about like anxiety, her emotions. Yeah, um, I think to tell us that like everything's not what it seems, and that no, she I'm has sure bad it's days not. too. I'm sure she does. But again, it but was, they're not worse than mine. It was couched in like nonsensical language. You know, it's like this celebrity language full of like buzzwords and empty words. I'll give you, I just want to give an example because I want you guys to just like understand. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about, but please, an example would be great. Yeah, the, the picture of, is of her crying, like looking very sad. Gorgeous though. You're right, and Beyond, that's what I look like when I cry. I don't know if you guys know that. Beyond stunning. Sometimes I find it hard to show the sad bits of me. Growing up with seven siblings and two very strong parents made me really tough. They hammered it into me not to let people bring me down or hurt my heart. It made me put up such a wall to protect myself, especially in this industry. Actually, as I'm reading this out loud, I feel like this is her way of responding to, to, Bella. to the criticism that she's a mean girl. Like I put up walls to protect myself because of like the way I grew up. Can I tell you that when I read it for the first time, like on my Instagram feed, it felt, I, I literally felt like it was a direct response to like the Bella Thorne accusation and all those no, years just, ago. Like, this accusation that she's an ice queen that like her and Victoria are in this cold war because they're both really icy so I feel like that's what she's saying perhaps we all have days where people make you feel bad and it's okay to be hurt by it like that's just like nonsense but okay no and like that's just like wait say it again like, we I, all have days where make where people make you feel bad and it's okay to be hurt by it no, we know that. Like we learned that in school. Like it's called processing emotions. Like I, that's a celebrity thing. Saying the most obvious, obvious thing and in a like, fancy way wait, and acting like it's a revelation. Yeah, you guys, wait. I just learned it's okay to be sad, and and you could be sad too sometimes. And if then you they'll wanted. make it like a trendy, like it's okay to not be okay. Right. So yeah, merch. it's giving nonsensicalness. Yeah, this part. I just thought I would write something because I never show this side of me here. I wanted to show you this side of me. I'm still unsure which side it was. This side that like could get hurt. Oh my God, she's, she's human? (laughs) Holy shit, I didn't know that. That's what she's saying, I think. And I I don't want to like laugh at someone saying I actually really like her and and I support her. I just like cut back the nonsense, everyone, please. Yeah, like just show us who you are or don't be on social media, honestly. it's It's like when people only show like the highlight reel and then- are like, well, there's this part of me too. And it's like, well, you're the one who only showed us the good part. Right, if we think a certain way, it's because you told us to think that way. Right. Totally. That's why authentic- That's how authenticity I feel about like, like Erica, ours. Jane, and Tom. She's always like, it was so dark. I'm like, you made him seem like- It wasn't. A, yeah. The it's, king. It's confusing for sure. Especially- like I read your book. I had so much respect for him. Right. And you're telling me the whole time it was terrible. Right. And it's possible that like you're covering up, but like to go so far on one extreme. She would glow about him. So true. But it was unnecessary. Like, right. No one asked. Right. Eric, nobody. Erica. Tom is just the best. Right. Yeah. Um, but I can't wait to try some of his food. Brooklyn. Yeah. He better be a good chef. I just after all say, this, after all of this, yeah, they did like one video on like Vogue when they were engaged, like cooking with the pelt spickums. Yeah, that always like feels like a weird thing, like celebrities who just want to try something new. Chef, yeah, no, and I think it's like definitely insulting to the chef community. Like, oh yeah, no, That's I went like to, us, I put myself through culinary school, bussing tables. Like, I worked so hard my whole life, taking shit job after shit job, education, education, this opportunity to finally make it and to call myself a chef. Yeah, and you made a pasta bolognese, and you're a chef. Yeah, well, by that standard, I'm definitely a chef because I make cereal. All the time. And you make dinner for Theo. So true. And that's not easy, especially recently. It's on new antibiotic. It's been really tough. A lot of mixing. You're also a chemist. My cauldron. <laughs> Spooky. Are you ready for our next story? That what Claudia sent to me, she put it in. She said she wanted it in the stories. Yeah. And that's what you get when you follow. I'm like embarrassed, like, because I'm literally forgetting her name and she's like, actually my friend. <laughs> 
what is Alice's name? Ashley Green. I'm so sorry. <laughs> when you Alice. follow oh. when you follow Ashley Green, she's a host of the Twilight Effect podcast, which I was on one time. Check it out. Um, and they always have like interesting guests. And this time they had, I think, the director. Um, and he was just sharing information. Here's what right. he shared. Taylor Swift was turned down for a part in Twilight New Moon because it would have been too distracting. I'm having like heartburn? No. Like the lights in my head, it's just like I'm feeling like lightheaded. Do you want me to read? I don't know what what's wrong with me. Maybe I'm just like looking in too many places. But have I'm you feeling, had something to eat today, sweetheart? Yeah, I had oatmeal and a go macro bar, so oh. I should be full. All right, let me know if you want me to do the reading. I'm okay. such a good reader. I think it's just like maybe I have a, just kind of a dull headache at all times. And it's bright in here. And it's really bright, yeah. Taylor Swift was apparently rejected from a role as an extra in Twilight New Moon as the director thought her appearance would steal focus from the rest of the film. At the time of the Twilight Saga's prominence, the singer was a known fan of the books and films. She was a twy hard. In a new interview, Chris Weitz, who directed the second Twilight film, revealed that he reluctantly had to deny her the part of an extra in the background. Taylor was a huge twy hard, and Taylor and I had the same agent at the time. And he said Taylor would like to be in this movie, not because of you, but because she's a twy hard. She would be someone at the cafeteria or the diner or whatever, but she just wants to be in this movie. Although it wouldn't have been a major role for the singer, the director believed that the surprise appearance of a major celebrity would distract from the rest of the film. As a result, he turned down the proposition. He said the hardest thing for me was to be like the moment that Taylor Swift walks onto the screen for about five minutes, nobody's going to be able to process mm-hmm. anything. I kicked myself for it too because I was like, wow, I could have been hanging out with Taylor Swift. Um, I just want to say, I think he's wrong. Wow, okay. And the reason why I think that is because of what Game of Thrones did. Mm -hmm. Having Aaron Rodgers, Mm -hmm. Chris Stapleton in like the final season because they were huge fans. Took away from nothing. Mm -hmm. Just a fun little fact. She could have easily been disguised. And by the way, like Twilight is as big of a machine as Taylor Swift was. At at that time, now she's like, you know, that would be like having Beyonce in your movie. But at that time, she was... Still huge, but it just would have been like a really fun thing. Yeah. And I don't think it would have distracted at all. And if anything, like New Moon would have been distracting because it was bad. Yeah, the thing about New Moon is that it's my least favorite no, because actually, Edward is in it for 45 seconds. And Eclipse is actually the worst one because that's the one about newborns. No, for sure. But like Edward's in it being sexy and like, you know, the end is like bad. Like the plot is not my favorite, but like there's goodness in it. The fucking second one, Edward's gone. Bella's fucking depressed. Like it sucks. Yeah. And she's there's in the room. a possibility. That's a song playing when she's going around. There's a possibility. And she's like, it's snowing. Then there's leaves. It's the blossoming. Seasons are changing. Seasons are changing. And she's just like depressed, like not leaving her house because Edward's <laughs> fucking gone. And yeah. I would I would do the same fucking thing. That reminds me of the special. I'm grateful for the seasons. <laughs> yeah, from Tim Dillon. You love quoting comedy specials. I do. I wonder what that says about me. Um, That you're hilarious. That's what it says. I think so. Um, I'm able to apply comedy jargon in everyday life. Everyday life. I was going to say that I obviously think that like, while it would have been amazing, it definitely would have been a distraction. But you do raise an interesting point about Game of Thrones. Even though I don't think that Chris Stapleton or Aaron Rodgers are as visually as d- distracting, even together, as... Also, because I mean, I guess like they were playing like cavemen and they look like cavemen, whereas like she would be playing a high school senior and she does look like a high school senior. So she could fit in. But like Taylor's just she's not one to blend in, you know, with yeah, the but hair it's, and the it's lips. Also, like in High School Musical 2 at the end, like Miley gets a cameo and like that just added to the movie. It was a fun thing. She's dancing like great. And she was like a huge star at the time. Yeah, that's no, that's totally true. And by the way, what's interesting is what they did do in, and it's not like it was the first twilight where it's like, yeah. this could eclipse the whole franchise. Mm-hmm. It's like Taylor's in the movie. They had some good, really, I mean, good momentum, huge momentum. It was the biggest franchise in the world. Like throw her in. Yeah. Especially because I think in the fourth movie, breaking Dawn part one, the woman who wrote the book, Stephanie Meyer is an extra. She's a guest at the wedding. So you see her in the ceremony when Bella's walking down. And then I think you see her like eating a piece of cake. Um, and a lot, the fandom knew her very well. So th- there is a way to do it in a way that's like not distracting and classy. But I'm also curious about the timing um, as it pertains to Taylor Lautner. Ooh. Was she trying to just be with her mans? Or no, like, they were together during that movie Valentine's Day and that was so much later. Right, but so like maybe she was like into him. And like that was like her first, and it didn't work out. So she like forgot about it. But then later on, they happened to be cast in a movie together. Maybe she was like had a crush on him for many years. And of all the men Taylor has dated, I don't think anyone, you know, has more glowing review than Taylor Lautner. Back to December. It's like the only song where like she's wrong, you know? Yeah. And she goes back to December all the time. 
Beautiful. Turns out freedom ain't nothing but missing you. Wishing I realize what I had when you were mine. I go back to December, turn around and change my own mind. She's mad at herself. She like literally like bounced and he was just like, this is such a nice guy, you know? Yeah. But now I'm happy for him because he's engaged to a girl named Taylor. So we all win. We really do. Especially Taylor, who gets to marry Taylor Lautner. Right. We're all winners. Are you ready for our next story? Mm -hmm. Julia Louis-Dreyfus's son, Charlie, has joined the Sex Lives of College Girls cast. Wait. Julia Louis-Dreyfus's youngest son named Charlie has been cast in season two of Sex Lives with College Girls. That show, which I adore, is literally breeding ground for nepotism. Timothy Chalamet's sister, everyone, you know? So true. Yeah. Uh, but he really looks like a regular college guy. And he's an actor and he's in other projects too, but it looks like a perfect casting. Now, I don't know this man. I'm sorry to this man. Um, but when it comes to nepotism, I very much judge on a case-by-case -case basis. And I will not be judging in a negative way because Julia Louis-Dreyfus, you know, has contributed so much to pop culture, to television, to entertainment, she could do whatever the fuck she wants. And honestly, her son's kind of hot. So yeah, how no, old is he? I, what? How old is he? He's 26, 25. Oh, cool. I don't want to be out here calling like 14 year olds hot. You know, yeah. kids these days, they're like 12 and they look 25. Yeah, when they're also 25 and they look 12. It's Honorable so confusing. Time. And yet I'm 28 and look 24. How old do you guys think we are? Sound off in the comments. N actually, sure. Jackie, I'm not interested in hearing what anyone thinks about how I look, honestly. Wow. Yeah. What if it's a compliment? Mm, no, because it might be a compliment. They, to they, them. they think, but, but really, an insult to me. It's an influencer mentor. Yeah. Because people are always like, oh my God. And it's so nice. Like ever since I've like lost like 25 pounds, actually. Um, people are like, you look amazing. But like, so I didn't, I didn't look That's, amazing before. Okay. I just want you to know if you go back to before you started dieting and you look at pictures from like the show, post show pictures, like every day people are like, okay. your skin's glowing, your hair's amazing. Where's your romper from? Okay. okay. No, that's fair. Yeah. It's just interesting, but like, you know. It's not like you're only getting compliments But that's now. life, you know, like somebody says something and you internalize it in a different language. Right, but also you do look good. Like, leave it at that. Take the compliment. No, for sure. Take the win. Walk away. No, for sure. For sure. Being gorgeous. It's, it's a lot of mental, you know, gymnastics. Anguish. Yeah. Anguish. Um, do the flip. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stop quoting a special. Nobody knows what we're talking about, Jackie. Okay, like, I'm quoting Tim Dillon's special. Go watch it. Do a flip. <laughs> um, i love sex lives of college girls i think it's so good waiting for season two with bated breath excited about julia louis dreyfus me too i i hope that he's great i mean timothy chalamet's sister is great so She's, sometimes nepotism can open you up to a great talent 100 percent. i'm open to it and timothy chalamet's sister is the best part of the show she's so fucking funny and i love renee rap i've been like keeping up with her post show but her brother isn't on season two like the i know guy. her brother on the show yeah that guy who was fucking kimberly yeah which was just like a, a nico real, nico i know he got like another job that show's gonna be like the next girls like i don't yeah. know why moron. anyone would leave it moron people are so dumb it like it's fun to watch it boggles the mind but it could never be me like i get on a hit show you don't have to drag me off the set my cold dead body. You'll be doing like the reboot. You'll be doing oh, the rewatch podcast. I'm the first one to sign up. I'm doing it all. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Like really switching I'm Lucas gear. Grabiel. For sure. Sorry, you were the saying? The first one in the reboot. Yeah. First one to sign up. The first one posting on social media. It's in my bio. Like. No, you know who you are? Mm, who? <laughs> <laughs> what? Bart Johnson. <laughs> You're on Cameo. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> I'm Bart Johnson because i'm still really good looking um even after the show's long over and i will be the first one um on set when you're the, commenting when the on all the, <laughs> when the reboot happens you're yeah. commenting on all the cast members i'm Instagrams. commenting on e news is post every time they post about something even remotely disney related you are doing cameos in character um motherfucking bart johnson what are you two doing in a tree <laughs> <laughs> evil fucking laugh <laughs> Okay. Oh. Are you ready for our next story? Mm -hmm. Tamara Judge is closing Cut Fitness after nearly 10 years in business. Quote, what? it's sad. That is sad. Tamara and her husband, Eddie, are saying goodbye to their business. People can confirm that the couple have officially closed Cut Fitness, the gym they own in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. 
The pair opened the studio in March 2013. Unlike big box chain gyms, the fitness studio focused on personal training, uh, nutrition coaching, and Spartan race training, among other things. Sounds horrible. Don't know if you know this, but CUT stands for Cardio Unique Training. And I just it's feel like- It's getting sir. No, but that's your favorite word. It's unique. Yeah, no, but this definitely feels like a ripoff of sir. Like, No, but they had a 10-year yeah. run. Uh, she talked about it on her podcast with Telly, Teddy Mellencamp, which we haven't discussed the fact that they have a podcast together. I know. And I feel like- I'm always seeing it around Me the too. charts and stuff. I feel like it does pretty well. I love that for them. Can't like it's surprising that they're friends. Yeah, but you know what? It's the recipe for perfection. Like two house, two fired housewives who will literally do anything to stay relevant on their respective shows. Um, it's literally like you can't create more chaos than that. Like they're both clinging on to what they once had. But I feel like that's. Even if other housewives like tried to do this, it would just be sad. But there's something like pretty respectable about their podcast. I, I don't know why I feel that way, but I maybe feel because like they actually do it. They do it, and it's always charting. Sometimes they make news. It's called Two Ts in a Pod. Mm-hmm. Really cute name. Yeah. And I guess because they're like an unexpected duo. Anyways, they're making news once again. Uh, but Tamara is sad about the gym. I think it's really the end of an era. But she also talked about her CBD company. You know, they have a CBD. They were on our podcast talking about it. Vena CBD. They're sold at Sally Beauty stores. And Tamara said, um, "We their CBD success business is very successful. It pays her way more than the show. So I thought that was interesting. That is interesting. And you know what? Like having a brick and mortar store for 10 years is not easy no matter what you're selling. No, and to own a gym in... COVID was yeah. really hard. So to have made it this far is an it's accomplishment. A, it's an accomplishment. Um, it is the end of an era, you know, it's like Koto insurance. It's iconic. Um, but you know, when she came on our show to talk about her CBD, like they pitched her for the CBD and we were like, yeah, sure. But we just wanted to talk to Tamara. And then the more I spoke to her about it, the vibe I got was like, she was running like an actual, like legitimate business. And I think she must've like invested a lot of money in this, like really early on. And it's paying off. I do believe that her CBD company is like legit. Yeah. I mean, to be in Sally beauty is not easy. Yeah. So good for her. Yeah. And I have to assume she was making about a million dollars a season um, on housewives. So that means she's making more than a million dollars. Yeah. I thought that was, you know, a little bittersweet news. Yeah, no, it's sad, but it's time. Yeah, but also maybe it's like it was time to move on from the gym because these other ventures are just more profitable. Or it was time to move on from the gym because she didn't have the show to really supplement like marketing wise. Like yeah. no one would have heard of Cut Fitness. It just would have been like another nice gym, gym in Orange County. But like being attached to the show and having all the events there and all the girls going to train there, like it's good marketing. Right, but she is going back on the show. So I feel like she could have held out if she wanted to. Yeah, but maybe it just wasn't worth it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I hope everything's okay. Speaking of another institution that's shutting down, but some good news. So I don't know if we spoke about this or if you guys knew that the Central Park Boathouse is closing. Oh. You knew that, I told you. I don't remember. Which really is like. Iconically sad. Iconically sad. Yeah. The New York Post had written like an op-ed about why we need to save the boathouse. Mm-hmm. And a secret billionaire has made a $6 million offer to save the Central Park boathouse after reading the Post. I wish a secret billionaire would just like save me. <laughs> um, but that is so cute. Gotta know who he is just because like the more billionaires I'm aware of, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love that, you know, it's important to invest in your city. And I'm glad someone else is so I don't have to. And I've never been to the boathouse. So I know it's iconic. It's where Carrie and Big fell into the lake. Like I know all about it. Mm -hmm. I've just personally never been there. So yeah. So the operator had said he had no choice but to close the Central Park restaurant on October 17th due to skyrocketing costs. Then the secret billionaire approached the operator with a deal to finance the renovation of the iconic property and keep it open under his current contract with the city. The original author of the New York Post op-ed said, however you played it, this is bad news for the city. A darkened boathouse would leave a heartbreaking hole in the park at a time when New York's green lung needs all the wholesome law-abiding human traffic it can handle. It's so true. Straight like this facts. is Like if it were to officially close, it would just be like reflective of the state of the city. Like, you know, exiting the pandemic, just not doing well. Um, so you know what? Alas, there is hope. Yeah, so I think that's some some good positive news. If you were hoping to get married at the boathouse one day, like the dream right. is still alive. Recreating the Carrion Big like kiss thing. Yeah. Um, also, if anyone happens to know like who the secret billionaire is, like I'm just like curious and nosy. So write in the comments, or if you like don't want to like out yourself, feel free to send me a DM. I'm just like beyond curious. Like, 
There's so many billionaires in and New York. And why must it be a secret? I feel like owning the boathouse would be, you know, a crown jewel in your portfolio. So it's probably like a billionaire who's not famous and like doesn't want to be famous. He likes being he rich. Just like, he knows that like- Maybe he looks out on the park and wants to see it flourishing. No, he's probably smart enough and like experienced enough to know like- People want to be rich and famous, and really, if they were rich, it would solve 99% of their problems. Like, fame does nothing. Yeah, but like, there's so much ego. Yeah, but so I'm saying, like, a, a normal billionaire might not do it, but we happen to find, like, a humble billionaire. Who he is? sounds like he would make great a great great husband. We're disgusting saying he. <gasps> <sighs> Let's be real. It's, it's probably, <laughs> like, God, it's probably a he. Um, <laughs> unless it's Mackenzie, you know? Oh, my, that is so terrible of me, but, like, Maybe it's Kylie. Can you, and let me just Google something really quick. Like, How I'm just many female curious. billionaires? billionaires? Yeah. Maybe it's Female Kim. billionaires, percentage male billionaires. I never know like what to say into Google. Like, I, I just have a, type the whole thought. How many female billionaires are there compared to men? Thank you. As of 2022, number of billionaires around the world in 2019 by gender. Okay, so statistics are on my side. I'm not just being a bitch. But this is also in the world. Male 2,489. Billionaires. Yeah. Female, 336. So it's like, it's apples and to oranges. Um, and that's not to say women can't be billionaires. I just know the world we live in. So I'm not saying I don't believe women can be billionaires. She never said that. I was sitting here the whole time. I she just, never said that. I know statistics. Because, you know, I'm always watching those videos. Like, now this. You know that, like, weird, like, that was, like, like putting clips. shit together? And it's, like, always sharing random shit. And it's, like, here's the, you know, the richest person in every state. And... This is just the statistics, not me. There's like two women and they're either like an heiress or a widow. Yeah, or a divorcee. Right. So, sorry, I'm not just like being a bitch against women. It's just what the thing said. Facts are facts. And that's because women aren't given opportunities and that's not my fault. Don't fucking put that on me, you fuck bitches. No, she's creating opportunities for women all the time. 100%. To have a great, I'm creating opportunities for women to have a great time at my show. Tickets available at girlnojob.com <laughs> slash tour so I can be the 397th female billionaire. And you know what I would do? Keep it all for myself. And for Theo. Of course, of course. And of course, give it to charity. Finally, he could get his foot fixed. Of course, I would give it to charity. Ch the charity world is everything. No, my charity is um, cookies for Claudia. The Turpin family. <gasps> 100%. Thank you for bringing it back. You get a big house. Oh, no, actually, that might be. You know, I was actually thinking when Diane was telling us all about this, Mike, Diane, buy them a house. Like, seriously, like, just pay the mortgage for the rest of your life. Like, come on, you have so much money. Like, I know it's not on her, but I can't imagine she wasn't so moved by right. everything she learned. And like, I'm, I'm sure they sat down for the interview ready just like to see how life was going and wasn't expecting to find that like it's still going on. And I'm just like, come on, Diane. Or Justin Bieber too. Like, come on. Agreed. And I think that, you know, when you're watching, uh, yes. And maybe she does gift, but I think also part of her job being- her job, like she probably has to draw a line somewhere because if she was moved by every single case, she'd, she'd own like 11 homes. She would have, yeah. So yeah. that's just not sustainable. Yeah. But it was just like, Dan was like, oh no, what can we do? I'm like, I don't know. Are you like the most powerful woman in the world? Like, right. do what something. Can we do? What can right, you're you chasing down do? this like moronic chairwoman of the council of this local board. It's like, Diane Sawyer's here. Like, <laughs> Diane, like, make a call. We're saved. Make a call. <laughs> Right, yeah, like gonna, start another fun, put it on your Instagram, call your friends. Like, yeah. I just thought it was like, oh no, I'm like Diane, like that's like when a lot of celebrities get backlash for posting like GoFundMe's for, for their like, family members or their friends and the friends' family, and it's like, well, you could pay the bill. Yes, I do think that it depends on the celebrity because there's this general like, I think a lot of people overestimate the type of money certain celebrities make. But like Lady Gaga posting like, save my dad's restaurant. Like you fucking save your dad's restaurant, bitch. I just bought your album. Like go fucking do it. <laughs> that was weird of her. Like low key. Yeah. Not cool. Not cool. <sighs> Are you ready for Dear Toasters? <laughs> yes. Dear Toasters is brought to you by Noom. When anyone decides to lose weight, it's not usually just about the number on the scale. I know for Plenty me- can tell you that. It's, I, it really doesn't even matter. For me, it's like about overall well-being. I know it's about like fatigue. There's so many things that come when I'm just not being healthy. Um, and that's why Noom is a really interesting approach if you're looking to make a change. Noom Weight is ready to help. Noom Weight's psychology-based approach empowers you with the knowledge and support to build lasting results. With their psychology-first approach, they- are helping more than 3.6 million people lose weight. Every journey is different, so your daily lessons are personalized and 
personalized to you and your goals. The program is based on scientific principles like cognitive behavioral therapy to help you understand your relationship with food. So I know a lot of people find a lot of different beneficial things from Noom. I know we both have talked about how what we really like about it is just like they have a food database and it's just so interesting like when you're eating stuff like if you're not really thinking about it you're not thinking about what's in the food um so they have a really extensive database that just lets you know like what exactly is in everything you're eating um and you can track your day see your day at a glance at a glance which i think is really helpful yeah noom i'll catch you in three weeks when i'm weaned off of breastfeeding we're getting back to work me and noom and you can stay focused on what's important to you with Noom Weight's psychology-based approach. Sign up for your trial today at noom.com slash toast. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash toast to sign up for your trial today. Excuse me. What do you have to lose? Sorry, it wasn't in the copy, actually. I think maybe they've moved on from that sentiment. Um, um Dear Toasters, our Wednesday weekly advice segment. So if you're looking for advice from your two favorite gal pals, um, you can email deartoasters at gmail.com. Dear Toasters at gmail.com and we'll keep it anonymous. You can change people's names. We'll never know. And if you write us an email and then you regret it and you follow up, like, please don't read this. We do get those emails too. So don't worry. We're never going to read something. Nobody wants us to read. We have three really good ones today. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go, I'm going to go like least crazy to most crazy. Okay, good. I need to work my way up. I need to turn these lights off so I can think. Okay. Ready? Hello, beautiful, stunning and smart Queens. I'm a, I'm a long time male toaster. Breather. Breather. Guanj Instagram follower, comedy tour guest. Who is this man? I've recently come across some news regarding one of my close friends that I just cannot shake from my head. My friend, let's call her Margot, has recently shared with me that she only showers once a week. This came up when we were at a fair and I said to her that I was going to go home and shower for the second time that day after walking around the heat and the fog of the barbecue smoke for hours. She then shared with me that she only showers on Sundays. Mind you, it was Friday. She tried to explain to me that her lack of bathing is the reason for her skin being so soft and that the reason she hates showering is due to some unresolved trauma from her childhood. Apparently, her parents would make her shower every day and she absolutely hated it and it would cause conflict in her family. This then created some resentment from her towards showering. I've heard you both talk about this on the podcast before, so I just wanted some input input on how to navigate this. She doesn't ever really smell and I'm not sleeping with her yet. But I just can't shake this every time I see slash think of her. Please give me your thoughts slash advice. Sincerely, a clean toaster who usually showers twice a day, but at least once. Okay, so two things. First, the fact that she showers uh, once a week, and then I'll get into like the reason. The trauma. The trauma. But the first thing, showering once a week, yeah, not most of us do it. But if you're saying she doesn't smell, she has this like gorgeous skin, and maybe she's on to something. Okay, so she'll smell like barbecue for the next two days. But if you're not going to be with her and it really doesn't bother you, that's just like... A weird thing. I would also just double check that she didn't mean she washes her hair once a week. Because there's two different types of showers. um, And girls, like, I have, like, three different types of showers, you know? Like, one, full immersion, going in, hair, everything, shaving. Second is, like, a light body between washes, you know? And then the second is, like, a, the third is, like, a deep body, no hair. Mm Mm-hmm. It's like everyone has their own version. I just really have two. I have three. Showering without hair, showering with hair. But there, I think there's two different types of showering without hair. Okay, but say she's talking about like she really doesn't shower, shower. I mean, back in the day, people only took baths whenever they could carry all the water. No, I'm sorry. Taking a shower once a week is not normal. So we have to get to the root of it. And it sounds like we're at the root of it. I I do feel like she's probably holding back on, she wasn't going to share like her deepest childhood trauma, like all the details at the barbecue. I feel like there's probably more there. Yeah, I would assume there is because just being forced my, to shower every, every day, day, that's like what parents make you take that's a shower. Ch- that's a growing up. So I feel like there's more probably unresolved trauma there. And I honestly would take the route of encouraging her to explore that with a yeah. therapist. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. That's being a good friend, honestly. Like, yeah. you can't help her. Yeah, just be like, I thought about what you said and it's really stuck with mm-hmm. me. Um, and I want, I care about you. Yeah. And I just like want to see you thriving. I don't want you to be like held back and not like showering because of something from your childhood. Like, have you ever thought of talking to someone? Yeah. I haven't heard the soft skin thing. Um, so as far as I know, that's not true. No, I showering dries out your skin. So moisturize it afterwards. But like, if you don't, I mean, I shower. How can water dehydrate your skin? Oh, because it takes away from the oils because water and oil don't mix. Oh, okay, whatever, Bill Nye. Um, so what was our advice? Talk to her about it. Encourage her to... Recommend help. Yeah, like dig into that. Yeah. It's something that should be resolved. You yeah, know? even if she just, she gets to the bottom of the trauma but still only wants to shower once a week because she likes how it makes her skin feel, that's fine for her. Right, she'll be clean on the inside. Mm-hmm. All right, next up. 
Good morning, ladies. First of all, thank you for always delivering premium content no matter what. Obviously, this was written before yesterday. I'm in a giant pickle. For some backstory, I had a boyfriend in high school who was my first everything. His name was Jack, and we really loved each other, but we had some different goals and plans at that point in our lives. We've talked maybe three to four times in the last 11 years. Never wanting to commit to to, never wanting to commit otherwise, he lived all over the country and really focused on building his career. He was engaged at one point, but called it off. Fast forward to this weekend, I woke up at 6 a.m. on Sunday to go to the gym and I had a Venmo notification on my phone. It was for $1 and it was from Jack. It had his phone number in the comment part of the notification. I've recently been thinking about him and he reached... I had recently been thinking about him and he reaches out like this. The notification came in around 5 a.m. So he obviously had been up drinking all night. Oh, that's a fair. He was up thinking about you. Yeah. He couldn't sleep. He, was he also was doc- going to the gym. He was Why were you a up? documentary? Yeah. I had to work after the gym, so I waited to call him. I called in the afternoon and we talked for almost two hours, just catching up as if no time has passed, which was how this worked with him every time we caught up. When I told him that I was engaged, he seemed genuinely happy for me. He's not on socials at all, so we had no way of knowing that. In this conversation, he told me the other efforts he had made in the recent past to get a hold of me. I'm obviously very in love with my fiance and I want to spend the rest of my life with him, but Jack has always been in the back of my mind. Am I making a mistake to not see him next time he's in town, end of October? Or do I block his number and not even entertain it? I struggle with living the rest of my life with a what if in the back of my mind. Please help. I will take the dragging through the mud if that's what's warranted. Love a forever loyal toaster. No, oh my God, this is like a movie. I was going to say, it sounds like a book. I mean, I would have to really know what your fiance is like, but like, is there a world in which you could be like, I need to have a conversation with someone like before we move forward. Are you open to that? Like if he seemed like a really jealous type or like a protective type, like you would know immediately that that's not something he would be open to. But it reminds me of this book I read, One True Love Z. You know, her new fiance really understood. She was like, you need to spend time with your ex-husband. Like make sure that like, I don't want to be like your runner up. Like I want you to choose me because you want to choose me. Yeah, that's very, uh, that's Fairy a fantasy. Tale. Yeah. What I would say to you is, you know, he could always be the one that got away, but I do think we have a tendency to romanticize Mm -hmm. the past. And I think you had like a high school relationship. Um, He probably seems really good. And, you know, every time you talk for two hours, it's, you know, you have like a cute, probably a little flirty conversation and it's like fun and exciting. But to live life with someone every single day and to find a person who you enjoy doing that with um, is not the same. Is a huge feat. And maybe every day in and out of Jack, it's not going to be those two hour conversations. And I think, you know, the bird in the hand is worth Mm -hmm. two in the bush in this case. And it's not like you were having doubts about your fiance before. And I think like Jack in theory is like, ooh, so exciting in practice. You know, it's another tough relationship that you got to work through. And I just don't think that I think, you know, it's like cute and fun and sweet right now. But you have the real thing with your fiance right now. And there's no way to know if you would have that with Jack just because every few years you talk for two hours and reminisce about the good old days. We were just talking about this on the podcast about how like a lot of people look back and like romanticize that like last year of high school, the summer before college, like, and in actuality, like it wasn't really like that for anyone. We just like look back on that time now through like rose colored lenses, whether it's because of like movies we've watched or just like our youth and nostalgia. So you're probably right in the sense that like you're remembering him better or more, no, more romantically than it was. Not even that. It's like, so say you meet someone who you enjoy for like an afternoon and then you start thinking like, oh my gosh, like every day would be like that if, you know, we were together, but it's like- no. No, think about the first time you met your fiance. Like, right. but the fact that you do have a life that you love with your fiance, like it really it's doesn't huge. get better than that. 100%. And the odds that it's going to be better with Jack, considering it's pretty good right now, are extremely slim. And considering like you really don't know him anymore. Like a couple phone calls over 11 years is not a friendship make. Yeah, no, that's not a relationship. That's not living with someone. Like I think you found it. Yeah, I'm with Jack. And I think that if you actually went down the road of exploring things with Jack, it would not work out just because most relationships don't work out. Hashtag, I'm with her. She's right. Listen to Jackie. Don't listen to anything I say. No, I think you were agreeing with me. No, for sure. But like your phrasing was just more on, on point. All right. This is the one I really wanted to get to. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay. Because honestly, I don't have any expertise in this at all. Do I? I don't think so. But again, I've never looked up your butthole. So. Oh. Hey, Jackson Claude. Hey. I've been dating this new guy for a few months and I have yet to tell him about a personal issue I have. Hmm. Hemorrhoids. 
I try my best to not let them be seen during sex, and I don't think he has ever seen them. If he has, he's just being nice and not mentioning it. So my dilemma is that I have to have a procedure done next week where I have to be put under. It's basically a colonoscopy, and I don't know if I should tell him about it or not. I've never been put to sleep before, so I'm nervous, but I'm just too embarrassed to tell him. Do you think I should just get this procedure done and keep it a secret, or should I go ahead and tell him so I don't have to keep hiding it while I simultaneously work on incorporating more fiber into my diet to shrink the roids? If so, how should I go about telling him? A toaster in distress. How long have they been together? A few months. I think that you should tell him. Now, there's something about the word hemorrhoids that's like, I don't know, maybe it was in a movie or something where it's like... You know, it's like a gross word. Yeah, so... When the when actual hemorrhoids are just like uh, actually extremely common occurrence for many people. Yeah. So if you want to go full hemorrhoid, go for it. I always think honesty is the best policy. If you're having a major surgery and you are seeing someone, like you have to tell him you're doing something. You could like lie and say that it's something like gynecological and then he won't ask any more questions. Or you could just be honest. Um, yeah, I'm okay with like a lie by omission. Like, yeah, I'm getting the thing done down come there. Come pick me up. Like, but- I think like you don't really have to go into like a hundred percent detail. Like, first of all, you'll learn a lot when he's when you're out of surgery and like he's the one taking care of you, if he is. Like that's what husbands do. So you'll really be able to see. And you know, if it's going really well, maybe you can just be like, Okay, like I was a little embarrassed, but like honestly, you've been so great. I actually just have hemorrhoids, like no big deal. No, but if you got through it, he didn't know. Right, right. See, like and no, but then like, what if he's like acting like a child and you're like, oh, wow, I'm so fucking glad I didn't tell this guy I have hemorrhoids. He's obviously like so immature and not husband material, you know? Right, right. I think we should see how he acts like before. It's a good test. Yeah, it really is. Cause that's what happens. Like when you're married, like your husband sees you at your fucking worst, no row virus. Like you- Birth. Oh, well, I haven't been there yet. But yeah, like you're like, like flesh, everything. Like, yeah. so if he's going to be a fucking pussy about some procedure, like- He's actually doing you a favor and saving you a lot of time. That's but if true. he's great. It's a good test. I would use it as a test. Yeah. Test I, him. I would tell him of some version of the truth. Um, and if it's going really well, I think he'll think, I don't think he'll find it like deceptive of you. I think he'll find it like cute of you. Like that you didn't want to like. There's nothing deceptive. And it's not yeah. like it's a big thing. Like it's, and it's not like something that's like contagious. contagious. Like. You have hemorrhoids. Yeah, it's so common. It's like a sinus When you infection. zoom out from the lens of the Big Bang Theory, that, you literally can't even see them. That's, so, I mean, it depends how big the hemorrhoids are. <laughs> um, that was your toaster. Thank you to everyone for being particularly vulnerable this week. Dear toasters at gmail.com for next Wednesday's show. That is our episode. This is a very long episode, and I'm glad because after yesterday's audio, everyone deserves it. So fingers crossed that when we take this SD card out of no, our- No, we're fine. We're fine. You never know. Mm. Um, so that's our show. Our show, no one else's, even though the Strice Brothers are here, it's not their show, it's our show. We have a great day ahead of us. We're headed to our spritz meet and greet in Fort Lauderdale. So we're excited to see everyone there tonight. And then we're back tomorrow with another fabulous show. Um, I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening to The Morning Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the past five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you are watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us The Morning Toast and leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and smart we are. Hope you guys have an incredible hump day. And we'll see you. I'm so French. Incredible hump day. That's not French. Day. You need Babel to figure that out. 100%. And we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.